Oh, yeah. You can always want what you don't yeah, have. So we'll why shouldn't he do it? Right. Well, it's sick, but... Well, I still don't know. I was just in my family. I was expecting to come over after work. Wednesday, cloudy, Chances or uh, snow. record over it, you know, you use a different tape to send me the show, but... <laughs> Hey, Mark. Don't fuck with me. Crime alert for you now a brazen shooting in southeast Houston at a busy gas station. It started as a robbery, but as the victim tried to fight back, the suspect took his life. Janelle Bluta has more on this shooting. Weekend violence in Chicago claimed seven lives and injured dozens more. The surge in the city coincided with that warmer weather. WG and Sean Lewis live at Chicago Police Headquarters with the latest. Hi, Sean. Selena, a push to save lives. Beginning today and going through the weekend, members of the gun control activist group Moms Demand Action will honor those impacted by gun violence. The UN has expressed fears of a full-scale war as the deadly conflict between Israeli forces and Palestinians continues for a third day. The Middle East is continuing to see the worst outbreak of violence in years. This morning, Palestinians in Gaza are waking up to more Israeli airstrikes as Muslims prepare for a somber celebration marking the end of Ramadan. Dr. Charles R. Johnson, an experienced leader in dental implants. I feel as if I have my own teeth. I feel like it's just a part of me. Experience and advanced technique give Dr. Charles R. Johnson another answer to tooth loss. I wish I'd known about it five years ago. I'd have done it then. It's a reliable alternative to plates or missing teeth. I feel better about myself. And it Call shows Dr. In, Charles in R. Johnson. Collect at 848-3719. Drawn College can put you on the fast train to success. Fast train. Ah. Damn, I wish I didn't hit him. You hit him? Yeah, I hit him four times. Oh, God. Really? Oh, God. I, I ain't got time to be talking, bro. I don't know I'm going to shoot. Oh, God. I hit about four times. Keep running, folks. I'm already pissed off, bro. Our focus from prison, young satanic killers, as you can see, to Pete Rowland. We now 
Ed, Sean Sellers. Sean is the youngest inmate on Oklahoma's death row. Uh, he was one of the youngest ever placed uh, in that particular facility. Sean murdered first a convenience store clerk, then some months later, his own mother and his stepfather in a brutal fashion. I'm going to do a quick head-to-toe assessment and see what's going on with Chad. Again, I want to address the bleeding first. What I do take note of immediately is coming out of his nose. This is called cerebral spinal fluid. That is fluid coming out of the nose or the ears. It could be bloody and it could be mixed with fluid, kind of a white, milky fluid. What happens here is when there's a head injury or a gunshot to the head, the brain expands. There's fluid around the brain called cerebral spinal fluid. There's no place for this fluid to go when the brain expands. So what happens is it'll come out of the nose, it can travel up through tubes called the station tubes, and come out of the ears. This is the type of bleeding that you don't want to control. Chad's brain is swelling and blood is getting pushed out of his nose. Clear fluid is getting pushed out of his ears. Even here at this young age, Palpatine would have a great understanding of restraint and patience, appearing to the public at large as a calm, well-mannered, and gracious individual, one who knew his way around the art of conversation and who could placate anyone in his path with mild flattery or a cautious agreement with their positions, all of which would serve to strengthen his efforts for greater power. However, service-level interaction and public service were not nearly enough to facilitate his goals, and in order to advance his position, and the position he believed Naboo deserved in the galaxy, he would collaborate with the supposed enemies of his house, the members of the aristocracy who desired to bring Naboo into the galactic fold as he did. Through this espionage, he would come to meet the man who would provide him a path to everything that he craved and more, his master, Darth Plagueis, known to the rest of the galaxy as Higo Damask, of the prestigious Damask Holdings. Sensing the ambition in young Palpatine, and his strong personality that was well suited for leadership, Plagueis would go on to court Palpatine into becoming his spy to advance his dealings on Naboo. Through these endeavors, Plagueis hadn't yet sensed the strong attunement to the Force that Palpatine somehow managed to keep hidden in his subconscious. And at this point, he was hoping that Palpatine was Force-sensitive, but he wasn't exactly looking to make him his apprentice at this moment, but was instead looking to add him to his repertoire of useful minions to advance the Sith Grand Plan. Sensing something deeper over a lengthened exposure to Palpatine, he began goading him into aligning himself with the principles of the Sith, telling Palpatine to seize that which he most desired. And using Palpatine's hatred of his father to his advantage, Plagueis tells Palpatine a story about how he came to bring about the end of his own brothers and sisters, who were contending with him for the rights to their late father's legacy, eventually winning out through careful plotting and securing for himself a high position amongst the moons. And after a confrontation with his father aboard a family ship, Palpatine's anger and hatred unleashed the immense force power he had been concealing, choking his father and slamming him into the ship's thick metal walls until his death. He would proceed to murder his entire family, making him the sole heir and sole decider of the fate of House Palpatine, all while bringing his true self to the forefront, letting the beast that had slept within his soul emerge to begin transforming Palpatine into the man he had always wanted to be. A man who was free of the bonds that had been placed on him from birth, and a man who was free to be the ultimate decider of his fate and the fates of those around him. Palpatine, in the moment after killing his family, felt exalted, a feeling that was slightly hampered by the fear of his actions being discovered. However, this too, like every other terrible thing that Palpatine had ever done, was swept under the rug. Only this time, it was his new master doing the cleaning up, and not a father he had so despised. This was, of course, the first event that would separate Palpatine from the ambitious and self-serving youth that he had once been to the megalomaniacal architect of terror that he would ultimately become. From here, Palpatine 
would immerse himself fully in the teachings of the Sith, deferring to his master in all aspects. Plagueis would train his body and his mind for 12 years while Palpatine rose amongst the ranks of the political structure on Naboo. And at the end of these 12 years, we find Palpatine in the position of ambassador for Naboo. In a secret annual meeting arranged by his master on the moon sojourn, we get to see Palpatine's mastery of the art of diplomacy and conversation in action, where he defers to the opinions of others, reading the crowd and the atmosphere before taking a position. And even when he does so, he does so in a way that's manufactured to satisfy those asking the questions, yet vague enough to hide his differing opinion or true thoughts on the matter. It was here on this very moon that Sidious made his first contribution to the Sith Grand Plan, an idea that would be instrumental in ensuring its success. The idea that the Jedi needed to be framed as the enemies of peace and justice, rather than their ally. With his own growing power and his master's connections, the pieces began falling into place, as new allies like Sate Pestage came into the fold, as well as unwitting and developing ones in Count Dooku and Sifo-Dyas. Throughout his years as his master's apprentice, Palpatine would grow his rapport with the members of the Senate and the Jedi as well, and his presence in the Republic as a rising star was well known and talked about the galaxy over. The beauty of Palpatine's restraint is shown to us in these early years, and his ability to hide as a proverbial wolf amongst the sheep is something that few villains of his magnitude are capable of. He moves in a way that's both elegant and reserved, projecting himself as a kind and caring man, and the sincerity he holds in both his smile and mannerisms make Palpatine come across as a genuine and admirable leader. In this persona, he's never seen giving in to anger or any other volatile emotion for that matter, and through the serenity of his disposition, he projects a calm and confident strength that serve to both disarm and inspire the people around him. Up until the eventual execution of his master by his own hand, Palpatine would work to bring the people and organizations that had been cultivated by his master to be subservient to him, and in the process, would also find for himself his own apprentice in Darth Maul. By the time the Naboo crisis had reached its peak, and Palpatine was elected as Supreme Chancellor, his power and prestige had now far outshone his masters, and the night of his election, he killed his master in his sleep, cementing himself as the focal point of the dark side, and the galaxy. Palpatine would go on to consolidate the power that had been conferred upon him by not only his master and the Republic, but as he felt in the moment following his master's demise, the dark side itself, as it had his master years earlier when he had disposed of Darth Tenebris, wrapping him in a penumbra of dark power that flowed through every fiber of his being. wanted by your peers to fit in where you don't fit in where any where you don't fit in in anywhere else and um, let me ask you Sean you seem so logical you seem so lucid so you understand apparently so well why did you kill your mother why did you kill these other two innocent people there is no 
good reason why. There never is. I can't answer a why. I can tell you what happened in my life to, that led up to it and what was going through my mind at the time, but that doesn't really present a reason as to why. There are the best part of a thousand favelas in Rio. Vast, sprawling slums, many controlled by drug gangs. Some of the favelas are worse than others, but all are violent. Here, police raids and gang battles are common. But it's the scale of the violence that beggars belief. And you have to remind yourself that this isn't actually a war zone. Stuck in the middle is the Ware School in Mare. It's surrounded by narrow alleyways where the fighting often takes place. Shit got dry up on the streets real quick. And we go and show nobody love. <laughs> hey yo, hey, niggas get shot every day, dude. You be out, nigga. You tough, right? Let's take a break. Here's your butter, Henry. Half. Half the 
calories of butter or margarine. Half what, Henry? My goodness. She's half your age. Put those eyes back on your toast where they belong, Henry. Next time, butter your bread with Philly instead. Only Sunkissed Children's Multivitamins have the delicious Sunkissed fruit taste kids love. Plus the essential. We noted a defect in the anterior abdominal wall with herniation of the greater momentum into this defect. The greater momentum was therefore reduced from the defect in the anterior abdominal wall and revealed a second injury to the lateral portion of the abdominal wall as well. In this portion, you can see there was small bowel that was also herniated into the defect. So we can be brothers. Behind his eyes lies a plan. Upon reducing the small bowel, we noted that there was a penetrating injury to the anti-mesenteric border. And behind the image of a good son. Common? So what are you guys up to out there? Sorry, Mom. Top secret. Where are we going? We're here. Lies the terrifying truth. Say goodbye. No! At this point, we started our formal exploration of the abdomen. You know you did? You could have killed people. The greater momentum was reflected, the transverse colon was identified, and was noted to be injury-free. You're a doctor. You know things. Well, some things. The ligament of trites was identified. What if there was this boy? He did these terrible things because he liked doing it. The small bowel was then begun to be run from the ligament of trites to the terminal ileum. I don't believe in evil. When innocence is just a mask. Do you really think I'd hurt her? As you can see here, this is the initial injury to the small bowel that was identified when the bowel was reduced from the defect in the anterior abdominal wall. The next victim. The injury was less than 50% of the circumference of the small bowel. Therefore, the decision was made to primarily repair this defect. The defect was repaired using a running foro vicro suture in a single layer. Holy Culkin, the good son. We tied our knots intercorporeally. Once you stay at one bet, you gotta stay to the whole shoe. Okay. I'm gonna flat bet you. Okay, so can I just wait for a good count and then just bet? Nope. I'm not gonna let you do it. I'm not gonna look cash. Okay, then can I get my money back? If I'm not allowed that. No, I'm gonna let you cash out right now. I'll let you play, but if you start at five bucks, you're playing at five bucks. The whole shoe. You start at 25, you're playing at 200. You play 200, you play, 200, you play the whole shoe at 200. Okay, but I can't have my money back then if, if you're not going to let me play how everyone else can. Nope. I know what you're doing. You're trying to count cards with me and you're making sure the shoes rich enough and you're going out there and gambling. Yeah. Each other. That's, we don't, I don't want your action. That doesn't seem like a reasonable thing for me to try to play as much as I can. Nope. You, you can do that, but we just don't, I don't want to book your I, we, we, don't, we, we have a right to book, you know, book your exit. We just don't want to book your exit. Well, if I would have known that I couldn't do that, I probably wouldn't play at all. Like, you're almost so. even right now. You're in 35. Yeah. So you're not going to let me get even? Nope. I'll let you play. I'll let you play. If you want to play if you want to play the whole shoe at $200 or $100, you know, three hands of 100 if you want to stay there the whole time, I'll let the whole shoe. Once you go down, you're, you're out of the shoe. But other people can still change that. Correct. Right? Correct. Okay. Um, huh. Seems like I have no chance of trying that. No, I, and I'm just telling you right now, so you're gonna keep trying to do this here, every other casino, they're gonna try to find you, they're gonna get you too. They're not gonna, they're not gonna book your action. Or anywhere you go. If they find out what you're doing. Zero, we know that this is gonna be what kind of a card? A low card. A low card, which is a two through six, and... All right, so it's a four, so we know he was keeping his count accurately. This is called the running count, and we just do this for every card as it comes out of the shoe from the very beginning of the shoe until the dealer shuffles, and that's the first step. Six. Tell someone you're sorry. People's egos tend to always get in the way of being real and honest. No one's perfect, and none of us are a saint. 
If there's something that you've done wrong in the past that you've never fully owned up to, so call let's, up let's that come to these five the keys Facebook to controlling your anger. Okay, sorry. because Research let's face shows facts. That apologizing all right, has some all amazing of us have anger, benefits and, and, and there are ways to deal with it in a more so effective way. Heal, when move you think about the, the world today, you think about empathy. how many people are exploding out of anger, how many people are losing control and hurting other people. It's unacceptable. All of us, we have we're challenged to have the discipline. You don't to handle need to run a big well. charity to make a big difference. So I want to give you that. Whether it means Look, volunteering I say, an we all have issues. Or if you're alive right now, you have issues. But that's okay, because so do I. This will like, make do I look like a person who's never been angry? Of course I've been angry. I still have to deal with it. I still get angry. But the difference is knowing how to handle that anger well. So... Research sure, anger is going to come up on you, but follow these five things, and I'm telling you, you can handle it in a much more effective way. Yeah. 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 Well, here they are. Yeah. 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 Don't let this happen. And I want to thank you guys. Think about this. Strong, supportive egos. They have a need to be right in all situations. Think about the last time you've been in an argument with someone, or a disagreement. Instead of being open to learning, which we all would say, we all have to say, hey, look, oh, I'm open to learning. Oh, yeah, now I have a lot more to learn in my it. life. I, I can learn so a lot more. Most people would about. say that, right? But then breakfast. when it comes to an it's argument or disagreement, all of a sudden it's like, hey, <laughs> I'm not my ego, is, my ego is right. I'm defending myself to the that. end. And we become but very attached. Ways, so like I've talked about attachment in this way before. I've talked about it in this way. Let's say that these are all my ideas. And I put my ideas here and I hold on to my ideas. If you disagree with my ideas and I'm attached to my ideas, I get really upset. Like I think, how dare you disagree with who I am? But if I take my ideas and I set them down over here, you disagree with my ideas, I can recognize you. Yourself. Why? No matter what you're saying, you want to tell you. So, not being attached you helps us to help you in a more yourself. significant way. So, because the I first realize way to heal it leads to the very second to key that. to what I want to tell you about, I mean, which is what I just said. Don't take things personally. Anger. 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 How many times have you anger. allowed your anger to, 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 to swell up and grow up because you're taking things personally? One fact, as I said at the beginning, is we all have issues, right? We all have When you become angry, it's a challenge. I'll show you that that principle not only operates in the Unpleasant for others. So sure. we've covenant. got to be very careful that we are listening to covenant. what we are seeing, what we are inhaling, and what we are eating. When you're angry, you're angry. You're angry. You're angry. You're angry. medicine. We want to do it. Come to take into balance those 3,000 years old. They spoke about, in the great Mars and Sages, spoke about how by being angry, we're not just eating. We're not just eating with our mouths. We're eating with our mouths. If now, if this were who we are looking at, we are consuming yourself through our ears, through our eyes, through our mouths. He said the first thing, he didn't say the first thing, the Lord gives you the desires of your heart, and then after that, they spoke about how you delight yourself. We are eating food, so all of those places. So, what helped me was to be mindful of what I was listening to via music. Okay, so is it music really helping me? Is it aiding my health or is it very destructive? Why is it not? What about what I'm seeing? If I see your face and I'm going to feel really happy, if you understand, if I see the cat down the road, they're having a boy day. But a lot of us, we are just sitting there and we think that so not realizing we are actually consuming that. We are not only what we eat, we are what we eat in all our senses. Second way that that helped me heal emotionally and mentally under your control was to realize this that I'm not a victim. Like, life is gonna eat you up and then spit you back out. You don't feel like a victim right now, right? I don't blame you. I do too. I realize that the universe cares 
never seen God. That doesn't mean you can't go get not killed. Not how do you know that God what? will do what he said he would do? I don't think that our context is our own reality. No matter what happens to us, you say that in giving him an opportunity to fulfill his word, he does everything that he said he would do to his word. And you know what you say about God? Count on God. And actually realizing that you have the power to lay your imprint on everything around you. You don't just have to be someone who is the only way you can delight yourself in the Lord, feels like everything is being done to you and you are completely powerless. Because when you feel you are powerless, you start to develop a lot of dis-ease. You start to feel like, okay, now the whole world is against me, it's me against the world. And really and truly, once you start feeling that actually, I, say, God, I've done we found out about I can heal myself. No matter what I'm going through, maybe I have a lot of problems and thoughts because it all starts in the mind. He desires. And what I'm doing now is to establish, or I'm attempting to establish for you what the Bible says concerning our desires. Because as I said, I used to hear the pastor, that time in India saw how there's subtle balance. But we really stop to think about I mean, after I'm going to do anything, no one the body, the mind, and the spirit. I'm the one that has to eat the food. I'm the one that has to take optimum health. I'm the one that has to wear the clothes. Not deviate well, from that balance, so he's you develop what we call dis-ease. I said a long knows time ago, what his word, if I will do what his word says, the only dis-ease you have is the inability to see that you have the power to heal yourself. We will go and obey God in anyway. Yeah, it is that we don't go by feelings, we go by faith. Slow motion in this side. So and in me and Can you hear that bird up there? It is so happy. What's the third way to heal yourself? Ask what helped me along my journey was to de stress you completely. Will, and it shall be done I don't care what you're doing. Like, you. just stop it right now like for that. one second. And, so I and meditate. Literally in and go somewhere Go somewhere where there's just trees around. I didn't feel like that's what helped me heal. I said right. one day that when you feel all wrong I gotta... about it, boy, that's when you're growing spiritually. That's the stretch. That's the stretch. That's when you're growing spiritually. And you know what? Of course, it's been a long journey, and I didn't learn this overnight. <laughs> I won't stay mad at somebody now. It's just I'm not doing that. I don't have time to be angry. I'm not wasting any more of my life being mad at people. It's so unproductive. That doesn't mean that I don't get hurt. It doesn't sure. mean that it's easy. But, you know, the Bible says to bless those who curse you. I tell you what, I'm just gonna curl your hair maybe, this story. It goes like this. It's such a good feeling to know you're alive. It's such a happy feeling you're growing inside. And when you wake up ready to say, I think I'll make a snappy new day. It's such a good feeling, a very good feeling, the feeling you know that I'll be back when the day is new and I'll have more ideas for you and you'll have things you'll want to talk about I will too you always make each day such a special day you know how by just your being you only one person in the whole world like you that's you yourself. I'll be back next time. Bye-bye. Virtually every person I work with who was dying came into the dying time with a worst fear vision. And they were very articulate about it if you were to ask them. And in a word, it was writhing in agony at 3 a.m. 
with no recourse, no doctor to call, and even if there's a prescription, it wasn't really getting it done. So in other words, all their worst fears rotated around physical suffering. And the doctors were so skilled where I worked that that virtually never happened. I mean, one or two percent. Amazing. So then if your worst fear never comes to pass during the course of your death, what does this sound like a recipe for, a prescription for, a guarantee of? Dying well. Because all your worst fears, they never ma materialize. and They never manifest. How then to explain the extraordinary level of antidepressants and sedation inflicted upon people in the last weeks of their life if their worst fear never comes to pass. So this is an existential mystery, right? My answer is they were wrong about what they're afraid of. That's the mystery of it. How can you be wrong about your worst fear? Answer is fear is not knowledge. It's easy to be wrong about it. That you have a worst fear, you're not mistaken there. But what is it? Well, it turns out, almost across the board, the dying people that I knew, their worst fear was disappearing without a trace, slipping under the waves of time passing. With the people who claimed that they loved them, crafting an ability sooner or later to reassume their normal life, which is a mark of adjustment and, and, and psychic sanity among us, to reacquaint yourself with and reacquire your pre-morbid normal life. Let me translate that for you. To be able to live as if the dead person never was, basically. Yeah. And that's what they feared. And they had good reason to fear it. Why? Because it's only towards the end of their life that they sort of copped a vision they were never looking for. Now they're dying, and they're wondering involuntarily what they did when someone close to them, prior to this moment, was dying. And they realized how easy it was in our way of life to, to move on. And they did so. And they realized this is a kind of sentence that's awaiting them, that they're dying in a time that is very keen on carrying on, not that keen on living alongside everything that's been. And they're about to join that mystery train heading out of town. 